So the way that we do that after I hit save is we're going to go to insert and import layout. Again, you can either use a default layout that ArcGIS provides, or in my case, I use a set of templates HRP uses um, for reports. So we'll go into New York templates. And for this, typically I use 11 by 17 landscape because it typically fits the map scenes the best, but whatever is most appropriate for your map is usually the best selection. And so once the template gets imported, um, it'll come up as a separate tab. And so this will be the first time we'll see the difference between the map viewer, which is the actual map itself where you can add features, and the layout view, which is where you can set your map, you can set your map scale, and you can also set your legend, legend values, north arrow, and other documentation you need to identify what the figure is trying to show. So this is what we're greeted with um, when a new template gets loaded in. So to change this, because right now this is just showing a default blank map so that the template will load, you can click in the center of your map and you'll see the um, selection squares highlight the sides and corners. If you right click this again and go to properties, this is the menu that allows you to select which map you want your layout to use. So for us, we want to select our map layer, which matches the same name as our tab up top. And this is a good time to show what the uh, New York State Eastern State Plain does to the globe. It basically makes the eastern portion of New York State, which is basically um, all of the counties that are along the Hudson River, um, perfectly centered on your globe, and it makes that area flat, and it strongly curves the rest of the Earth. So that's how you get a, a flat map projection. In one area, it, it has to curve all the other places. So when we right-click this again, we can hit Activate. And so now what this does is it changes it from a layout where you're just affecting what the PDF is going to look like, and now it's showing you how it's going to interact with the map. So we'll zoom in to our sample location, and we'll pick a scale that looks appropriate. To have more control over the scale, because typically you'll use your mouse wheel to scroll to a zoom that seems like it's going to work. And then in the bottom corner here, this is where you can select your type of scaling. So this is just a straight ratio with no units. I'm going to hit customize and change it to one inch is equal to um, a certain number of feet. And so now our map scale is updated. And we typically like to use even numbered uh, intervals for our ratios, either one inch is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60, based on an engineer's scale or engineer's ruler. Makes it more convenient to do hand calculations on these maps and actually use them for swing ties in the field. So I'm going to change this to 40, and you'll see how it zooms into our actual site location. So once we're happy with the placement, um, we can hit the activate map frame up top, and it's going to now fix it into our template. And so now we have the locations on our map, and now when we zoom in and out, it moves the whole template and it won't affect our map. So our scale will be preserved. In the corner here, we have the legend, and this is what we use to describe what's actually the, the features on the map. So we'll expand this out so we can read it a little bit easier. And we typically like to format it so that um, when you're wrapping text, so in this case, you can see that the text is justified instead of uh, aligned to the left boundary, and the font isn't particularly helpful. So we're going to modify those now. So we go to Show Properties, and for this, we're going to hit uh, Scale to fit patch size so that our symbols are a consistent size. And I'm going to turn off my layer name. I don't want to have redundant information in my legend. So now that that's set, we're going to go to our adjustments. And this is where typically a two inch word wrap um, will allow you to have one line for each symbol. So you don't have things in multiple lines, it makes it easier to read. And then we'll go to our text symbol. And this is where we can select that we want um, the position of our text to be uh, justified to the left. And you'll see it move over. So now that's set. We can move this down to the corner. If you don't want the text that is automatically put onto your figure, 
here, you can go into under insert, dynamic text. And what this is, is this is the credits for your map um, that are automatically put onto your template based on what your base map that you selected. So if you want to just move those off the map for a draft or you want to uh, potentially select a different base map, you just scroll down to where your service layer credits are. And this is the same text that's actually on the map. You can select this and just push it off to the side. So now it's no longer taking up space on your figure. So the last steps are gonna to be to format our legend and our information that's on the right side of our figure. So here I'll put my initials down, which is CMS. Update the date. For right now, we'll leave the job number alone. And then this is where we can modify what we want our title of our map to be. So typically for this, we'll call it a site plan, and then we'll, we can put the address of our site location. And so now the final step is to set our scale bar. So our map is currently showing one inch is equal to 40 feet. So we're going to update our scale bar to make sure that this is truly one inch when it's printed out in an 11 by 17 figure. So the way to set that is you go to the properties of your uh, scale bar, and for this, we're going to change it from adjusting the divisions and division values to simply just do the number of divisions. And I'm going to set my division value to 40. And now it's automatically scaled to be one inch is 40 feet. All right, so the last step is to export our map. And so the way to do this is once we hit save one last time, I'll hit the share button. and export layout. So this is where you can select um, what the quality of your image is gonna be, the compression. Um, in our case, we don't have um, any rasters besides the base map, but if you had an overlay, this is where you can choose how much detail you want it to show, because the more detailed, the clearer the picture, but the bigger the file size and, and vice versa. So we're gonna select where I'm gonna actually save this figure to. And then once the export's complete, you'll get this completed notification at the bottom and you can click on this link and it'll show you what your figure actually looks like. So here's our completed map. So it has the scale bar, the information about the company that produced it, um, the author and designer, the title, the location, the type of information that we're trying to show and the physical location of the borings themselves. So this is probably one of the more simple types of maps that you can make, but basically we can already show that the sample locations have the coordinate systems of where the samples are located. It defines what type of samples we're going to collect. And it also describes the locations of the samples relative to the site area itself. Um, for a more complicated version of this, what I just showed is the way you would make a simple static figure. Now that those layers are created, you can actually push that to a web hosted server and take the information and put it onto um, a shareable website that you can then give to a client or give to a person that you want to show them this information and they don't require the program to view it. So this web map is a little bit on the complicated side, but the way it works is these site boundaries are individual parcels of interest that were uh, potentially going to investigate. Um, the location of this map, I'll zoom out so you can see it. So this is the island of Manhattan. This is Brooklyn and this is Queens. And this body of water is called Newtown Creek. It's a national priority site um, and currently undergoing investigation and upcoming re remediation. Um, the majority of these areas were impacted by petroleum over the last 150 years. The way this map is set up, our base map is the street view. And then on top of that, and you can, when you're zoomed out, you can't really see the details, but when we zoom in, we can see that these are sandboard maps are basically historical fire insurance maps. And they describe the nature of what the parcel was used for historically. So in this case, we can see that this is oil storage. Um, and these are all different oil storage tanks. These are the refining areas. Um, and the way this map is set up, uh, besides having the information stored in the actual 
parcel. So this tells you that, okay, this is the Gettys Terminal Corporation and this is the site. The other way this works is you can use this to show how areas have changed over time. So I'm gonna move to the south in a particular area of the creek where it was developed later on. So this current basement that we're looking at is dated 1887 to 1898. This is this map collection. If we fast forward to 1928, you can see how this area went from being undeveloped to now being used for asphalt and oil storage and oil processing. Um, and then the most recent Sanborn map collection for this area was completed in the 1970s. And it'll automatically zoom you to this area. And this is basically what the building is used for now. So kind of showing the spectrum of a simple map with just some static locations that you want to include in a simple report or proposal all the way up to a digital deliverable that you can give to a client or to a person that wants to interact with the actual information. What's nice about this format is the client or person you're sending this to uh, can't modify the map, but they can interact with it in as many ways that you have it set up. And all you have to send them is basically a URL that you copy and paste into an email. So no hosting size, and it makes it very convenient to share large amounts of information for big areas and, and big sites.